Hey everyone, Jake here from CVP and welcome to our November 2023 edition of Quick Kit. Links to everything that we mentioned will be down in the description below. Atlas have opened up pre-orders for their second set of Mercury lenses. The first set was announced a while ago now and consisted of the 36, 42 and 72mm T2.2. And this new second set will consist of a 54mm and 95mm T2.2 and a 138mm T2.6. The first sets are now slowly but surely shipping to customers, so fingers crossed this new set starts shipping fast and soon as well. The Mercury's are light and compact professional full frame 1.5 times front mounted anamorphic lenses that are reasonably accessible for most filmmakers to acquire or rent. Optically, I love the way these lenses look and I'm excited to get the three new focal lengths into the studio for testing as soon as possible. If you missed our review of the first three focal lengths, make sure to check it out. The Sony Burano was launched back in September and since then a few brands have come out with their own specific accessories for it. Vocas, Crozial and Wooden Camera all have released different bits of rigging for the Burano. The Wooden Camera range is probably the most comprehensive though, with it featuring a new base plate, side rails and cheese plates, D and B box, top plate and EVF system. The power distribution system looks pretty good and it's great to see it as it's one of the things missing from the Burano. The D-Box adds a 12V 2-pin, a D-Tap and a 24V 3-pin. This plate also allows for hot swapping batteries via the DCN on the unit or via the internal battery. The B-Box is an additional array of ports that you can daisy chain off of the D-Box. It looks like a solid solution that I'm sure will be popular with Burano owners and rental houses holding them. Sakuta have also released the Z-Finder for the Burano, which looks to solve my biggest gripe with the camera, which is the positioning of the viewfinder loop. This Z Finder uses the top rail on the LCD to attach the frame to. You can then attach a Z Finder Pro with the 2.5x lens to this frame and you're good to go. This means that you don't need to reposition the monitor to go between using it as a regular monitor or an EVF. Zakuto will also be selling the frame separately or with the Z Finder Pro loop, so if you've already got the correct loop, you can just grab the frame. I'm excited to see how this works and feels when on camera. Some of the geniuses in our engineering department are developing a mod for the Burano that will use parts from the existing viewfinder. Keep an eye on our social media for more details on that very soon. Sony have announced two new products and some upcoming firmware. This included their latest Alpha Series camera, the A93, and their long-awaited 300mm f2.8 GM OSS. I was lucky enough to get my hands on both of these earlier this month, and they are both very impressive in their own ways. We checked them out in a video earlier this month, so if you want to learn more, link to that is in the description below. Long story short though, the A93 is all about speed. And at the core of this is Sony's new full frame 24.6 megapixel global shutter sensor. And it's the first of its kind to make its way into a consumer available camera. It has a range of impressive photographic and video features, but the big focus for us video shooters is the global shutter sensor. Fingers crossed, this is a sign of things to come in Sony's more video or cine focused cameras. I didn't get loads of hands on time with the 300mm, but from the time I did have with it, it performed incredibly well, and I'm sure it will be a very popular lens for photo and video users. It's a very compact and light lens given its focal length and maximum aperture. It also looks incredibly sharp, and the autofocus when paired with the A93 was very fast and responsive. Both the new camera and lens are available to pre order now on our site. Sony also announced firmware updates for the Alpha 1, A7S3 and A93, which should be available in March next year. This includes the A7S3 getting breathing compensation and DCI 4K 24p. Lightbridge and DOP Choice have come together and produced the Snapbridge system. This combines the reflection system from Lightbridge and DOP Choice's larger modifiers to create a new, pretty interesting way of creating a soft source that you can really fine tune and control. The system can go from a large white diffuser in soft mode to a black side for negative fill. It looks like it produces some really nice looking light though. Cine D has done a nice interview with the CEOs of Lightbridge and DOP Choice, which goes into more detail about the system. So if you want to learn more, check that out. We've wanted to get a Lightbridge kit in for a while now to experiment with in the studio. So let us know down below if this is something that interests you. Canon launched a few new things this month. The biggest announcement being their new 24-105mm f2.8 LIS USM Z. And it's a lens that I was super excited to check out. We reviewed it earlier this month and it really does live up to the hype. 
The combination of its focal length and aperture make it an incredibly flexible lens that is very unique. It has sharp, clean and modern looking optics, solid optical stabilization and performs well for both photo and video shooters. Its blend of features will make it something that professionals will lust after even with its £3,600 price tag. If you want to see exactly what it can do, check out our video on it if you haven't already. They also released two new RF lenses, the 10-18mm f4.5-6.3 to IS STM and the 200-800mm f6.3-9 to IS USM. They also announced a new multi-camera control smartphone app and a range of firmware updates for their XF and Cinema line cameras. Kodak has released their new Super 8 camera. This was initially announced back in 2016, but Kodak had been silent about it until early this month when they fully announced its specs and pricing. This new camera combines a few modern features with the ability to capture using a range of Kodak's Super 8 film cartridges. You can do this at 24 and 25 frames per second, as well as 18 and 36 when under or over cranking. It also has an 11% larger image than regular Super 8 film, thanks to an extended gate. It also now has an audio recorder built in that can record to SD cards and has a 3.5mm mic input as well. It uses the C lens mount and comes with a 6mm f1.2 lens out of the box, has a 4 inch LCD viewfinder for monitoring the image, a micro HDMI output and comes in a nice looking pedi case kit. It has gotten progressively more and more expensive since its original announcement, with it now retailing at $5,500. Let us know if you're interested in this though and if we should grab one to review down below. If you are one of the 70% not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing as you're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year and we'd really appreciate your help. And if you want to buy anything you see in this video, head over to cvp.com where our experienced team is waiting to help you. Apple have unveiled their latest range of M3 Max. This includes the release of three new processors, the M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max. Apple's M series of processors have really changed our workflow as well as many other filmmakers and photographers. We use M series versions of the MacBook Pro and Mac Studios as our primary editing workstations and they have been rock solid since we upgraded to them from our custom built PCs. These new M3 systems look like solid updates though, especially the progress made with the GPU which can now handle ray tracing. I really like the look of the new Space Grey MacBooks. One little detail about this event is that the entire announcement was shot on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and edited entirely on a Mac. Cron Technologies, known for their Kronos line of high-speed cameras, have released two new models to their line, the 4K12 and the Q12. These cameras are designed to do one thing really well, capture high frame rates. The 4K12 features a 4 3rd inch DCI 4K sensor, whereas the Q12 has a Super 35 2048 by 2016 sensor. The 4K12 can capture DCI 4K up to 1,397 frames per second, and the Q12 can capture its maximum recording resolution at 2,782 frames per second. But you can balance resolution, frame rate, and bit depth, depending on what you need, with them going up to close to 30,000 frames per second at the lowest resolutions. Both shoot a mix of 12, 10, and 8-bit in Cinema DNG RAW and H.265 or H.264. They both feature a 5 inch 800 by 480 high brightness rear LCD, 64 or 128 gigabytes of internal RAM, an internal 1TB NVMe for storage, and have a good range of different lens mount options to choose from. The 4K12 starts at $14,500 and the Q12 starts at just under $20,000. This puts them in roughly the same price area as the Ember, which is a fantastic camera. But these new Kronos cameras do have some features that the Ember doesn't. So maybe worth considering if the image from these new cameras holds up. Let us know what you think of them down below. Sigma have released their long awaited 70-200mm f2.8 DG DN OS sports lens for Sony E and L mount. We compared it to Sony's GM OSS 2 70-200mm f2.8 in a video earlier this month. So if you want to learn more, link to that is in the description below. This new Sigma lens is extremely good value for money though. It's built incredibly well and is really great for video shooters thanks to its excellent breathing performance, solid focusing mechanics, incredible stabilization, and clean, sharp optics. You can't go wrong with either, but the Sigma does offer a lot of bang for your buck. However, the Sony is lighter, slightly smaller, has the zoom ring at the back, and has a much better close focus range while still performing excellently in our testing. Check out the full tests below. Insta360 has announced two new action cameras, the Ace and the Ace Pro. 
they look like a pretty cool new option for people in the market for an action camera. They have different sensors, lenses, formats, and price points, with the Pro being the more fully featured one out of the two. But here are the key specs of both. One very interesting part of this release is how the cameras use AI for a few different processing modes, such as the pure video low light mode. One drawback of the note is the lack of 10-bit and a log recording mode, which the DJI Action 4 does have. Right, let's get into our quick fire honorable mentions. Links to details about these are in the description. Ancient Optics have announced their Lomography Pets for Lux project. Apple has released Final Cut Pro 10.7 for Mac and 1.3 for iPad. Blackmagic released update 1.2 for their iOS camera app and Resolve version 18.6.3. Edel Chrome released their new phone clip phone mounting system. Feelworld announced the LUT 11H 10.1 inch monitor with a peak brightness of 2000 nits. HyperDolly have announced their track free robotic dolly system on Kickstarter. Innovative released the workstation monitor arm. Kipon announced their Bavier's 1.25x PL expander for PL mount. Leica announced content authenticity for the M11P camera. Liebeck announced the THV tripod. Mica has announced a Canon EF to RF locking adapter and their new 85mm f1.4 autofocus lens for Sony E and Nikon Z mount cameras. Mid49 have released accessories for the Canon C70, Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K, and a range of custom power cables. Nanlite released a new line of LED panels. Panasonic announced firmware 2.4 for the GH6, which will bring LiDAR-based autofocus when paired with the DJI system. Rode announced the NT1 signature series and new firmware for the Wireless Pro. Siriu announced the Sniper series of APS-C f1.2 autofocus prime lenses. Smori released the RA f150 for a nail lens for their Bowens mount range of lights and their VB99 Pro mini V-mount batteries. Sound devices have released firmware for their Mix Pre series. TT Artisan announced the 100mm f2.8 for Leica M mount. Viltrox released a PL to L adapter and their new series of Snow Peak batteries. Vocast released a new NATO clamp. And lastly, Xian released the 5Ray M20 and M20C. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe ready for next month's quick kit. And let us know what kit you've picked up this month in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.